Why don't you have a seat? Cool. Uh, this is going to be you. I'm going to focus you up. Awesome. Um, sit however you'd like. What we've noticed, we've only done one podcast here so far. Um, and uh, it was a band starter. He spoke one of the things. Ah, he's a sweetheart. Thank you for your patience. I didn't want to come up here and use the bathroom because I knew it was going to be a number three. Oh, you masturbated. So, no, that's a number four. What's a three? Diarrhea. Oh. Headphones, yeah. Uh, your choice. I like them, but, you know, as they say in France... You know, it's up to you. It's my favorite expression. Um, how do you feel? We just opened the windows because the sun is better, not in your eyes. It's beautiful. I oh want my to have God, the view. look at that view. Oh, there she is, my favorite girl. Oh. Statue of Liberty, see her? Oh, she's a harbor chick. Um, Ghostbusters 2 reference. Um, you know, I played Harold Ramis in a movie. Nuh-uh. Yeah, and a few talents, stupid gesture about the National Lampoon. Very cool movie, very cool story. Oh. We'll cut to the whole movie. I came up with the perfect idea for the first National Lampoon movie. Laser, Laser orgy Orgy girls. Huh? It's about Charles Manson in the 10th grade. Huh? The man's visited by aliens, or UFO, whatever you want to say. Guys, Manson in high school. You're right. We'll put him in college. It's actually funny. No, forget Manson. I told my agents, I was like, please do whatever you can to get me in the new Ghostbusters. There's another one coming out? Yeah, a sequel to Afterlife. Oh, I didn't know. I liked Afterlife. Me? I loved it. It was incredible. I cried multiple times. Were you going through a hard time or was it because of the movie? No, the movie. Dude, I've been in New York since 2003, and I truly think this is the best view of any building I've been in. Except I fixed a printer in Midtown, I had a really good view. Um, what was the situation that called for you to go to Midtown and fix a printer? Oh, it was an old job I had. Oh, uh, printer fixer. Yes, for Pitney Bowes. Welcome back to another episode of Take Your Shoes Off. Rick Glassman here talking about Pitney Bowes. Now, yeah, tell me about your job as a technician. Well, uh, for a short little while, I was a Pitney Bowes printer repairman. Mm. Uh, do you know Pitney Bowes? One of my best friends is black. Oh, but my no. God. Uh, <laughs> name him. <laughs> uh, I worked for this company. Pitney Bowes Jackson. Pitney B- <laughs> Pitney Bowes knows. <laughs> I, uh, I ended up. I needed a job and I was smoking weed at my friend's house with his like lifelong best friend. I'm like, I need a job. And his friend is this Russian guy named Vlad. And he was like, I have a job for you. Do you know how to fix printers? I was like, well, I can learn. Right. And so I was like a printer mercenary for Pitney Bowes. I would go around town. I'd get work orders on my phone, go fix them. I had a bicycle. I was riding around town. It was actually one of my favorite jobs of all time. Was it usually a, a, a connection issue or is it actual hardware printer issues? Hardware printer issues. HPIs. I had to, uh, I mean, there were a ton of HPIs on the DM375. Oh you know, my God. The C model. <laughs> Don't get me started. C model. How long ago were you doing this? Oh man, long time. Right. 2015 to 20. 17? C models were, I feel like, done in like the early 2012. Like 2012. I remember we were I saw- a vintage right. company, you know. Let me tell you, okay. figuring it out on site, nightmare. 
I, I just fake it till you make it. I mm. was like, yeah, I got it. I was calling the help desk like all the time. Two phones at a time? I, I mean, yeah, yeah, two phones. I was like, Jesus. please help. And then on the other one, I was like, I know what I'm doing. Yeah, it was uh, it was fun though. It was crazy because I go to these multi-million dollar companies, these huge, massive mail machines, and I'd walk in. You mean I, the patriarchy? The patriarchy, yeah. And it was my job to shut it down. Right, the mail uh, machine. To fix it, to get inside and change it from the inside out. And did the printer business yes. now that everything is so digital yes even your work orders are sent to your phone mm -hmm. did that slow down and you're like i'm gonna get into something else or did you leave before the boom bu bus bus bu bubble bursted the printer what? bubble bursted they still use Say that one time the regular printer, speed printer bubble bursted printer bubble burst bubble bursted we'll be right back after this <laughs> welcome back to another episode of rick glassman nitro my name is rick glassman and today we have Ari crossing the screen. Now, I know what you're thinking, so I'm not going to waste your time by talking about it. Man, that's good. <laughs> and we're back. Uh, I was, uh, I mean, they still use Pitney Bowes machine. It's a mail meter, so companies put all their letters through it with mm -hmm. letterhead and it just stamps postage on it so you don't have to go out, pay for stamps or get stamps, and then you just drop it in the mail and then you leave. Do you advertise for them on your podcast? No, but I should. I mean, this is free advertising right now. It's Pitney Bowes, uh, get to where you're going with Pitney Bowes. You, you already had the slogans. Pitney Bowes knows. Pitney Bowes knows. And we'll have Bo Jackson with a printer head oh holding a baseball bat and a football glove or Incredible. something. Incredible. A football glove. <laughs> that is my favorite part well, of the football. In, in my head, in my head, uh, because I was going like this holding the bat, I'm like, well, he doesn't have a hand for a football now, so he could be wearing a football glove ah. holding the bat. I think there was one where he's wearing a helmet and a baseball bat, though, or something like that. Really? He was incredible. I mean, the, dude, the, the image I have in my head of him always is him running up the wall to catch a ball mm. like he was in, you know, some sort of kung fu movie. It was incredible. Could He's you say amazing. that? Could you say kung fu? Say what? Run up the wall? Kung fu. Kung fu. Is that a derogatory? No, not at all. Okay. I'm celebrating kung fu. I'm giving it a shout out. Maybe shout out to kung fu. Yes. Shout out to kung fu. Put their Instagram handle. Yes. Shout out to a kung fu. I, I feel like if I don't acknowledge <laughs> mustache, no mustache, mustache, no mustache. Gulp, um, gulp, gulp, gulp. This is nice. Yeah, it really is. Thanks for I coming like over. Thank you for having me. Um, we went back and forth with times because yes. uh, I'm doing two podcasts today because sometimes the uh, hardcore uh, Glassman boppers will be like, Glassman wore that sweater and sweatpants the last episode. It's like we're filming them back to back. I mean, you know what? You're filming it for you, and as a byproduct, people are going to like it. You, but you start doing what they want, you lose what makes you an artist. Uh, are you? Are you? How do you feel in this? Are, could you get closer to this, or maybe I'll raise your levels? Let me hear you. Yeah, how about that? I think I'll raise your levels a little. Raise the levels. No, it's going to be good. It's good. Yeah, we'll fix it. When I walked in, I immediately felt at ease. This, you know, I love this apartment, but it's very like new, kind of sterile. In it's a way. very, I, I refer to it as a museum feel. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But you made me feel comfortable off the bat because of how comfortable you seem. Oh, I seem comfortable. Tell me what that means, your verbiage saying seem instead of are. Well, because I don't know you and I don't know your feelings, but you're presenting as comfortable. Or you as in be, you're feeling with me. For example, this couch is comfortable. Yes. Like, meaning you're comfortable in the couch. Yes. So that's what I'm saying. Like with me, is, it, is there something about me that made you feel comfortable? And did that happen upon greeting or did that happen just from social media or the, fo the brief phone call we had? When did you feel it and what did you feel? Well... I felt a bit odd because you answered the phone. Rick Glassman, good to see you. <laughs> you said yeah. your name. I was like, I, I haven't heard that in years, and I kind of like it. <laughs> and then, uh, no, just in a sweatshirt, loose-fitting sweatpants. We're hanging out. We're having fun. The only thing you needed to just up the comfort level was, like, a shawl and, like, a s bowl of soup. I'm going to order some soup. Do you want some soup? <laughs> I mean, I would kill some soup right now. <laughs> 
Do you want to soup it up? I, I just ate. And I'd rather not order soup. I thought okay, you were going to say no. we don't have to order soup. <laughs> well, you I know. thought you were going to say, I could order soup. I'll never say no to anything. Yes, always. You got a yes, always. Right. You know, you have a background in improv? Without yesing. Yes. And I'm having fun. Good. Good. <laughs> you, uh, what's your podcast? Be and Ian with Jordan. Oh. Patreon.com slash Be and Ian pod. What's the difference between the public and the Patreon? Or is it only Patreon? No, no. We we do uh, two episodes a week, but we do Ooh. early episode on Friday, bonus on Monday, and free on Wednesday. So so Patreon just gets them a few days earlier. Yeah, and a bonus episode. So Patreon gets three a week. Yeah, whereas, no. You do Patreon two? gets two a week. If I'm not on Patreon, how many am I getting a month? You're getting four. Gotcha. So the bonus is just Patreon. Yes, and if you're on Patreon, you're getting eight. Holy shit, dude. Dumb. And more content. I'm making mix Trump. I'm 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 making mixtapes. I'm you know uh Bad G Trump. China. <laughs> I'm not good at impressions. My Christopher Walken is terrible. Let me hear it. I feel like everyone could do Walken and I can't. Okay. Um <clears throat> a mouse in a cup of milk. Right. Kicking his <clears throat> feet. I think that's really good. A watch. I think that's really, really good. Thank you. I I'm Christopher Walken. <laughs> if you take a look around, there it you'll is. see a mouse is yes. my friend. A mouse is my friend, and I love this view. <laughs> Your Patreon is just you and Jordan doing annoying ass Christopher Walkins, just saying, Amazing. not even a conversation, just couches are blue. You have nailed three episodes ago. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. A woman and a man. Go on a boat. You're getting so much better. And one doesn't make it back. <laughs> Damn what? it, that's a I stripper think you DJ. Have to go high. I think you <laughs> have to go high. Hi, I'm Christopher Walken. <laughs> and there it is. And thanks for subscribing. What's your Patreon business like? Are you making, uh, relative to your podcast, are you making bank? I mean, I wouldn't say bank. You know what? Can I tell you? Honestly, that's my favorite song. I'm worried that YouTube's going to flag it, though. I didn't know you would break out into song, and I'm so happy you did. YouTube flags that shit sometimes, even if it's not the original. I know. YouTube bullshit. Can I just say it? I mean, let's just be honest here. I don't know, man. Bullshit. I don't know. You know, it's a double-edged sword because... We, uh, we as, as, uh, podcast creators yes. at the moment are relying on the convenience of the user base of that application. Sure. But at the same time, it's slowly like a frog boiled in a pot, killing our ability to speak freely in a way that they demonetize. If you talk about certain topics or if you cuss too much, or if you say certain words, yeah, but demonetize doesn't mean that it's not up. Right. But for people you mean are, yes and ah uh, well right but is you didn't go to third city so i studied in third city <laughs> is that like taking a number three city guy you know uh, i'm a ucb guy ah uh, i'm a uca but mm. you know what can you do upright citizen academy but, you know. <laughs> right sure <laughs> um the uh the rcb is what i'm familiar with what's that the reclined uh, citizens brigade <laughs> I'm the ST. So, so tell me, you're, you're saying that it's it's you feel that you're you're on the uh, you're are you on that angry comedian side of being no, censored? No, not at all. I think that's very lame, and it's very funny because most of that conversation takes place on like Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, and people are like, "You should be able to say whatever you want," and then they'll like insult you, and they have to use like. Uh, you know, an asterisk and stuff right. because if they don't, J it'll asterisk get, W. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, yeah. Well, that's uh, dude. Somebody was anti-Semitic to me, and I was like, I don't have to engage with you. You were a simple-minded fool, and I got flagged. Are for you Jewish? Community guideline violation. I'm Ashkenazi, a little bit. Oh, little I was bit. just joking. You got to be a lot no. of bit Jewish. No, I'm like 18 percent Ashkenazi. So you're not Jewish. That's Jewish. Did you grow up Jewish? No. I found out on a 23andMe. They sent me a mirror. <laughs> you got 23andMe too? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then they actually saw me and I got me ood. <laughs> okay. Edit that out. We want well, to look good. No. We want to make you look good. No, oh, no, no you keep it in. Yeah, thank you. I was just I was just glass and bobbing uh, you. I I uh, 
No, no. Yeah, people are like free speech and then they have to edit themselves because if they say certain things, they'll get kicked off and they don't even realize that like, yeah, that doesn't exist on the internet anymore. G G and they're still fighting for it. It's like so dumb. Give me an example of something. Yeah, well, I mean, like a perfect example would be, you know, and I don't think I'm going to get flagged for this, but, you know, when you are fucking... <laughs> Just want to say I'm sorry. I got a talking to. I've reflected and I'm learning. And I would just like to say that uh, what I said is not who I am. Uh, I'm on new medications and uh, I'm not really in the right frame. I haven't been sleeping and I haven't had soup today. So <laughs> my blood sugar's high, but it won't happen again. Thank you for your patience and thank you for your forgiveness. Um, yeah, so I have, I do have, um, when I hit 100,000 subscribers, uh, they give you this app that it's not, it's not posting, but it's, it, it tracks as you're going. I have it, I have it listening to it. Oh. So it lets me know when something needed to be censored. So I appreciate you. Yeah, sure. Um, it's wild how they live censor like that. It's crazy, but you know, that's the world we're living in. You know, it's like the right is bad and the left is bad. I'm going to close the window. Tell me about the right and the left. Well, you know, uh, the right is kind of what I use, you know, on my daily basis. And the left is sometimes, you know, something I'll use to like open a jar or like, you know, uh, sometimes I'll text with the left. But I realize that, you know, the right is as important as the left. But really what's the most important is what you have in the center. Uh, oh, God! Uh, stop! 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 Uh, stop! I'd like to apologize. Um, my intention was to be playful. I understand I, I was invading somebody's personal space and excreting bodily function. I'm on a new medication. Um, interestingly, I've had a lot of soup, but uh, what I did was meant for comedy. And if anybody was turned off by that, I, I apologize. And, uh, were you, how do you, I think it's actually important instead of to assume what I did was anything, I should ask, how did you feel about that? Thank you uh, for that. And I also want to thank me for accepting what you had to say and you for accepting your responsibility. So thank you for that. Uh, I don't want to assume that my feelings are reflective in how you feel and your feelings are valid. Uh, oh God, oh God, make it go away. <laughs> okay. Hide it! Oh, oh, oh actually, don't, don't stop doing that. <laughs> Once I start a job, I have to finish. Fine. So your reputation, Ian, Ian? Yes. Ian yes, is Ian. a wild boy. Oh. I don't mean necessarily wild boys and going out to the uh, Ace Hotel and going dancing on the no. dance floor. No. But more like your comedy, your big energy, your goofy, you know, you, you, uh, uh, you're silly. Yes. Would you say that that is your brand or would you say that you are so goofy and since that is one of the things in your bag, that is how you are represented? Or would you say that's not really how people think of you? No, I mean, I, honestly, I don't think about like brand or whatever i just try to be who um right Rick, sorry no no i i get it you're on new medication <laughs> a lot of soup though with soup. uh i just like to be myself and obviously when i'm on stage i'm like a heightened version of myself but i truly more than anything in life i love to have fun i love to laugh I've been in the darkness and I know how it feels and I've seen the light and I've come out of it. And uh, ultimately at the end of the day, I'm a clown mm -hmm. put on the spot to make people laugh. So I embrace that and realize it's not that serious, but I like to be silly. I like to be insightful and I like to be positively insane and insanely positive. We'll be right back after this. Daddy has to pay his bills. And another way daddy pays his bills is by bringing the funny. I have a stand-up show at the Irvine Improv March 16th. That's right, two days after Pi Day. Put, we'll put Pi, three, four, one, four, one, four, nine, one, two, seven, we'll put, put it across. And uh, come on down, tickets are $500 a piece. It's not that bad. Oh, wait a minute, I read that wrong. They're $25 a piece. And if I sell out, Irvine Improv said that they'll put my name up 
on the marquee that says Glassman's got the biggest <laughs> show business. Now, I don't care. Some people already know this. Some people don't aren't bothered by it. I do think it would be a cool thing for me to be able to have a picture of my name on the marquee that says Glassman's got the biggest <laughs> show business. So if you want to come to a show two days after Pi Day, tickets are in the description. That's at the Irvine Improv in sunny so Southern California. Ticket link is in the description. <laughs> I don't talk about this much, but I want to invite people onto my Discord. We got a big community of Tyso fans in there. I engage often. The link will be in the description. If you're a Discord user or if you're not and you're interested, you could go download Discord. Join the Discord invite link in the description. And we're back. Tell me about the darkness you were in. Well, I'm uh, coming up on eight years sober. I tried to get sober in 2008. But, uh, you know, coming up on eight years over, so mistakes were made. Brother. What happened in eight? Was it the was it the uh, the real estate bubble that bursted that made it difficult for you? Yeah. Actually, can I tell you something funny about that? I, what do you guys think? So, What'd you say? Come on, you can do better than that. What do you guys think? Huh? You guys want to hear something funny? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what's up? There is a great comic named Daniel Simonson. I don't know if you know him. He's Shout from, out to Dan Simonson. We'll put his Instagram handle up here. He's from Norway. And he talks like this, and uh, he is white, so I can do that. <laughs> uh, but he and I, when so I moved to New York in 2003, left in 2008 because of from my where? drinky drink, 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 came back in from 2012. Where, where, in tw where did you move here from? Delaware. Oh, from Wayne's World. Or imagine being able to be magically whisked away to Delaware. Hi, I'm in Delaware. And cut to me saying, I've heard that my whole life, and we're more than just Wayne's World. And cut to me saying that you smell like a doo dee le doo doodly doo doodly doo doodly doo doodly doo. And cut to me saying, uh, let's swing right along. Uh, cut to me talking about how Miss Pac Man gives me a boner. Cut to me agreeing and saying that's why I got kicked out of an arcade in 1998. Oh, geez. Mm. Ten years before you had to get sober for the first time. It was the beginning of the darkness. Right. That's when the light started to fade out. Well, real quick, last one, if you don't mind. But cut to me showing um, somebody showing me their, their ID and me saying, a lot of people's girlfriends are in there. My girlfriend is in there. Hey, a lot of people's girlfriends are in there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I say that line a lot, actually. I'm Me not too. even a huge Me Wayne too. World head. Dude, Is that one that you say a lot, too? When I'm outside the cellar and it's like pe people come, if you stand by the door, people think you're like the bouncer where they think that you like work there, you know? So they'll be like, do I get in? Do I? And, and I'll just be like, a lot of people's girlfriends are in there. <laughs> right. I'm like, what the fuck? What percentage of people you think you said that to know the reference? Oh, none. None? none? Dude, I've, it, yeah, none. None. If y'all know this reference, which you will by now because we just cut to it, but if you knew, if you would have known that. If you know that reference, <laughs> you might be a Wayne head. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> now you're starting to speak my language. And us boppers know what I'm talking about. Woo! Um, let us know in the comments by saying, I, I know the reference, Ian has a tiny penis. And if, uh, uh, <laughs> if you, what? <laughs> if you don't know the reference, it's like I don't know the reference. Cut to Ian cut to cut to me with a large hog knocking, <laughs> okay, right. and then going whoops and using my large penis to pull it back down. Tom, if there's enough time, but that one's last. Tom, Tom, prioritize that. <laughs> <laughs> also, every time you do that, yeah, it's you know like you do it and then it cuts to something and then it cuts and you don't uh, you're doing it in between, you know. Uh, we, we, we know how to make it work, but it's one snap. Sorry, I was trying going. to get music going. I like to picture, I just like to picture like, uh, like people like from like going to high school with sometimes and it's like, 
I wonder, I, you hear Rick Glassman's out in LA? Yeah, I hear he's like doing cool stuff. Why? Well, I, I wonder what he's doing. Just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My friends are having families <laughs> and buying homes. <laughs> and I'm like, my penis moves this around. <laughs> uh, man. If you don't laugh, you'll shit. Well, then I better stop laughing because I have not been shitting. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I've been doing enough for the both of us. Why movie. are you having the diarrhea? Like, what's going on? Is Are you always just stuff pouring out of you? I, well, back to the darkness. I drank my stomach lining away when I was younger. So I've had stomach problems since then. And it doesn't help that I consume a heroic amount of coffee every day. And I chain smoke cigarettes. Mm. So it's not good for the belly. You were drinking... Um, like Rock getting blacked vodka. out? What? You were drinking so much every night? And or when you drank, morning? you couldn't stop? No, I drank Rock Out Vodka. I loved it. Crystal Palace, eleven ninety nine a half gallon. What's up? And <laughs> you're just always drunk? Yeah. What made you want to stop? It was ruining my life. Yeah. <laughs> it was terrible. I was losing jobs. I had to move into a halfway house. I fucking, you know, DUIs, jail. It was fucking a nightmare. Wake up bleeding, you know. Wake up bleeding from where? Wake up bleeding from my anus. Oh, really? No. Cut to that thing where I forgot what it is, but my anus is bleeding. My anus is bleeding. What is that? It's uh it's this one of the first viral videos. There was there's the, these little cloud puffy guys what? where they're just like they're just like la 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 and they're having sure a good time. It was a viral video, not a fever dream. <laughs> um. Dance, everybody, dance. Do you see? I agree. So far, it looks like everything's going pretty well. It's just a really uh -huh. nice video. You guys are having fun. Yeah, I think that's probably much it. Is that this it? is fun. Oh, he's even, no, well, I guess he's just having even a better time. Still calm. Yeah, so things are good. Yeah. So that's pretty much the whole video. He's just having a good time. How do I turn this off? Well, wait. Say the line. Oh. What the fuck? Oh, God. Wait a minute. Oh, What's happening here? My anus is <laughs> Wait a minute. What the fuck? And they're all just still reacting the same oh way. Oh my god. That's like one guy, one cup. For the love of God and all that is holy. I love it. I love it, Goku. Wow. That is incredible. That's like one guy, one cup. He's what? quoting me from probably like 2009. This was 13 years ago, so that's 2009. Well, 2010 what? now. But probably, wow. Well, let's see exactly. This was posted and it came out before this, September of 2009. But it came out from before then. This was Dude, when I was in high school, I think. That's wild that I just nailed that. What uh, year did you graduate high school? Uh, 2002. Really? Today, actually. 2003. Oh, how old are you? 47. Oh, no. you were held back uh, a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what they do with mod? How old are you? Uh, I just turned 38, December 31st. 2022? What? 2022? Yes, yes, yes. Nice. Yes, yeah, 23 now. Happy yeah, belated yeah. birthday. Thank you. And happy new year. Thank you. Happy new year to you. Thank you. And happy belated birthday. Thank you. You're welcome. May your acquaintance be mm -hmm. forgot and only mm -hmm. time. May your acquaintance be People listening to this, if they still are, are just going to be so fucking they annoying. They turned it off. They <laughs> turned it off. Here's my impression of the cameras aren't even on. <laughs> yeah. Here's my impression of somebody's face. Somebody watching somebody's face. I guess I can't be the impression of both. This is just people listening to this. Uh, <laughs> oh. 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 Mm. Zip. Zap. Zap. Yes, I am. Yes, and RCB. Football. I don't want to catch stuff during the podcast. 
just since COVID, you try to avoid catching things. <laughs> That's true. Um, are you a glass half full or a all the way full kind of guy? When you fill up a glass, do you I'm fill it to the top? I'm a glass runneth over guy. People don't say the word runneth unless they're referring to a glass. Prove me otherwise. Uh, or a cup. Some type of Well, uh, I was dishware. runneth late today, so I raneth here. <laughs> I guess doesn't 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 she have a uh, a scented candle that uh, the flavor of her vagina, Gwyneth Paltrow? We'll be right back, or I'll be right back. You keep going. I'm just gonna. I was a water. little late today. I had the runneths. <laughs> this is the most fun I've had in 2023. No, but somebody sent me a video of some sort of gremlin in a movie laughing that was like exactly like me. And I was like, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, we should make your laugh uh, a staple of the show whenever somebody, um, whenever somebody um, <laughs> says, here's my impression of a gremlin. And if it's not good, we'll just throw in, we'll just throw in yours. I love it. So tell me about, uh, tell me about New York comedy and how do I, uh, should I, I want to come here more and, and do it. Should I start coming here and be, be, be part of the scene? What if yeah. I don't smoke cigarettes and what if I only drink coffee a few days a week? <clears throat> well, I mean, you know. We've and if I joke- don't drink alcohol, really, can What's I fit that? in? If I don't drink alcohol, I don't smoke cigarettes and I only have coffee a few days a week, um, can I fit in? Well, uh, I know we've been like joking back and forth, like cut it if you weren't up, but in like, advice series if you are thinking about it send me a tape um can i, I can just, can just send you this podcast look at it i could do stand up for you now is this for you to forward to somebody or just so you know my stand up just so i could do it for i you. know and i like to give notes and then uh maybe we could work on something and then once you put it together we can then use that to get you into the club i don't want to have to I, I mean no disrespect i'm being sincere that has nothing to do with you i don't want to have to collaborate with somebody else with my act though i i like i've been working on it and it's really good that's fair. I mean, well, do you mind just doing some sure. here? Coming to the stage, Rick Asman. Oof, jeez. Tell you something. I just flew in from Los Angeles, and boy, am I tired. I had a flight. So I'm sitting next to this fat guy in first class. Ex- I'll stop you right now. Okay. I'm going to call Esty and streamline you in. You don't even need to audition. Do you have that kind of pull? Yeah. Call her up. Put her on right now. Uh, my phone's over there. I can't. Do you need me help? Do you get it? <laughs> no. It's fine. <laughs> it's a new phone. I don't want to oh, mess okay. <laughs> well, we could use mine. You could just look up her number. I, I have a bad memory. <laughs> Oh, uh, let me remind you, you were going to call SD because <laughs> you liked my boy am I tired joke. <laughs> and then I just wanted to, he- I don't even want to know the f- I sat next to a fat guy joke. I want to hear it for the first time at the cellar. Great. So let's. <laughs> <laughs> Lost your mind. <laughs> just m- me going around life now doing that because of all the things i sometimes i've I've been in like situations where i say something and i just go edit that out (laughs) i'm getting robbed (laughs) sure you're not jewish i feel like how jews get robbed (laughs) my allergies you can't say that Uh, the simpsons already did it did they oh yeah no flavin that you know the Uh, scientist flavin Frank. No, but uh, but tell me about New York. I I I'm not being um facetious. I'm, I'm not being uh I'm not like uh, making fun of the genre of stand up talk. Maybe I don't do it do it all the time. But like I am in New York, and like uh, I'm doing uh, uh Robert Kelly's podcast tomorrow, and it'll be at the Cellar. Oh, that's so fun! And I've only been to the Cellar once before. I did his podcast before. He's great. He's great. Let's hang. I'm there tomorrow night. When are you going to be there? I'm going at uh, tomorrow late afternoon. What time? He like, usually does his podcast at like he's 8 p.m. Doing it. Yeah, he's doing it. Oh, that something made a noise over that there. That was my. That was something else. I'm working, okay. doing other computer stuff. Trying with to help you with the camera episode. stuff. Thank you. Let's see. It looks like everything's still going. Uh oh. Yep. Everything's yeah. going. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I think like I want to start coming here more and I like being here so much. I also love podcasting with people here. Um, I was talking to uh, 
Dan about that, how, I don't know, it's just, you know, for, not for better or worse, it's just I do notice that, like, oh, you know, I like it. I like New York. I like New York it's comic vibe. It's the best. NYCV. Um, it. So it would, it, like, I have a reason, like, when I come here, I'm doing podcasts, I'm doing work, mm -hmm. so I, but I don't do stand-up when I come here. I mm -hmm. think if this is, a like, I'm tired after the episodes, I go and I edit and I do. Yeah, yeah. Is that the place? Is the cellar the place? Is that like the the main? I feel like it's the place. Caroline's yeah. was the only place I would perform when I'm here, and it just closed. Oh man, dude! I did the last one of the last shows at Caroline's. Why does it close? Why did it close? Is it a money thing? It's like rent. I don't know. I don't know what's gonna go in Caroline's because it's like you you walk in, you have to go downstairs. It's like this huge space. Lots of restaurants you go downstairs. I don't know. You've never been I'm in a restaurant where you like go downstairs. A, like H and M or something. I don't know. It'd be cool if it was a Dave and Buster's. Ooh, Times Square Paintball. Dave and Buster's is great. Whenever yeah. I pass by Dave and Buster's, I go in. Usually, I go in. Uh, when I say one try, I mean I I do it once. Whatever the high score is on Papa Shot, I'll go in. I'll beat it. What's Papa Shot? Um, basketball with a hoop goes like uh, this. Cut are you a clip. hoops guy? You're on the air. I got the new world record! Thank you. Keep playing, keep working hard. Anything is possible, buddy. Just keep practicing, do your thing. What's your name? You want me to sign that? Yes. You got a pen? Is the air conditioner on? It may be. Do you want me to turn it off if it is? It is. Yeah. Cold. Oh, I also did take my clothes off. Is this part of the bit of the podcast where you put the AC on and see if anyone says anything? I mean, yes. <laughs> Whoa, is that a Nerf gun? Oh, this apartment's great. I think it was not the AC, it was just the fan circulating. I turned it off, but it might take mm. a second to turn off. Do you want to put your jacket hey, on? Hey, tell me real quick, what's it set to now? <laughs> tell people, or they know, they know the number. Man, that's good. <laughs> they know the fucking number. Oh, Do no, you okay. think... That 70 is the funniest number. I think 70 is funniest, but the best number is 70 fun. I like I like 70 because I feel like 69 is kind of the funniest number, but how do you one up 69? 70. Yeah. 70 up? Remember no, one game? up from 69. Oh, heads up, seven up? I mean, yeah. becoming a grandma. Oh, sorry. Um, it's very chilly. Oh, now it looks like you need some soup. <laughs> I'm just ahead. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, ever since, ever since you gave it, what's that? Isn't New York great? Yeah. New York's the best, man. I, I love don't know. It. I don't know if I want to live here. Why? Because LA, man, just, Wolf. you drive down the, the coast, Ooh. Ferraris, Ooh. titties, Ooh. dicks. Uh, Fucking I'm sold. Palm trees, yes. Malibu, Ooh. sushi, uh. movie studios, Ooh. Brad's pits. E Both of them? Mm -hmm. All three, if you count him. <laughs> Brad Pitt, Brad Pitts. Uh. Yeah, man. But you know what New York has that LA doesn't? Hmm. Bagels. Yeah. We've cornered the market on them. Also, look at that view right now with the sun in the sky. It's incredible. What see a blessing. Lady, you see Lady Liberty over there? I see her. You know what I think when I think of Lady Liberty? I think about... Um, Ghostbusters 2. I also do think about Ghostbusters, the first one. But I think more about um, how like this country was built by the need to get away from the suppression mm. and how all are welcome. Mm. It says inscripted on the Statue of Liberty. We'll put up a picture so you can see it. Give me your cold. Give me your hungry. Whether it's nobler in the mind to suffer the weatherly storms of the outrageous distances between oceans past. Mm. Forever thy numbers come. Forever thy numbers last. It is art thy in heaven runneth. Cups for finding thy name. For love and faith in all that exists is nothing for lack of shame. We need to trust ourselves in the other's hearts while others' neighbors may rest our soul on beds of fortunes for others' neighbors lay. 
We are nothing more than nothing has, nothing has ever been as such. For when we're tired or when we're weak, more than we ever needed is enough. May all acquaintance be forgot and old. I also went with Fiction. I wonder what Rick's doing. Yeah, he's having podcast people just catch me talking for eight minutes while you're just like literally sleeping and I'm just talking. <laughs> <laughs> now you tell me stuff for a couple minutes. Mm. Gulp, 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 gulp. Where do I begin? I mean, ultimately. <laughs> He who binds himself to a joy does the winged life destroy. He who kisses joy as it flies will live in eternity's sunrise. And, you know, that's written <laughs> and, on know. the Alamo. Yeah, that the grocery store. Or yes. is it a gas station? The Alamo Draft House in um, <clears throat> Arlington, Virginia. Oh, the, that's the Arlington Draft House. Arlington Draft House, sorry. Alamo Draft House is in... Southern Manhattan and Brooklyn. Did you know you could rent out the Alamo Draft House for a uh, movie? And I was thinking about doing that for my birthday, but I was also going to have... Do you want to hear the saddest sentence from a 38-year-old man? I was going to have a birthday party at a paintball but, but, place, but, but this I sentence, canceled. I have to... Really quick. I just have to correct you. This sentence was said as you were 37. Fair? Fair. Go. I was going to have a birthday party at a paintball center but i canceled because i didn't think anyone would come <laughs> because they're not your friends or they don't want to do paintball i don't know <laughs> did you cancel after you sent the invitations and you were not getting a great response or did you not even see if you'd get a good response i floated it to my friends and they were like that's a great idea dude we'll have so much fun and then i got a group chat going and everyone was like i can't and then one guy goes <laughs> No, I can't. I'm getting COVID that day. <laughs> <laughs> Did that hurt your feelings? A little. Yeah? Yeah. Do you yeah. find it's difficult to have friends and groups come around at, at, a, at the ease of like, let's do this day now that we're a bit older? Well, it's tough planning anything with comics because people are on the road. They've got podcasts. They've got shows, this, that, the other. And I always feel bad about like having a birthday party because I feel this thing of like come celebrate me like I'd rather just have a get together and like have fun than be like it's my birthday you know but I'm also a New Year's Eve baby so that's like a weird thing as well you, you know, know it's funny when I if I were to hear a New Year's Eve baby what I would think was not that's that person's birthday but that person loves going out on New Year's Eve like I'm a Halloween brat man I fucking love you know what I mean <laughs> did you go out on New Year's Eve no I we, usually work on New Year's Eve. I didn't this year, but I went to the cellar and then... Did people know it was your birthday? Yeah, it was really nice. I, every, all the staff and everybody was hugging me. Happy birthday. It was really, really nice. And then uh, um, at midnight, the, Atel went up as like the first comic of 2023. And then he Did he go up me. before midnight and he was there as the ball dropped? No, no, no. After midnight to be like the first comic right. of 2023. And then... Um, he brought me on stage and we like went back and forth and it was like really fun. And he got me a birthday cake and like a friend of mine got me a code and it, it was a, a really, really nice birthday. What is a code? Coat. 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 Rick. Coat. Have you seen Coda? It's my favorite Led Zeppelin album. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, was there a comic that goes up while the ball drops? Yeah. Yeah. There's like a big countdown. Who was on stage for that? No, I don't know. I was outside smoking cigarettes. Right. Hurting your stomach. <laughs> yeah, I was just living in pain. Is there a romantic feeling you have to to stand up here? Oh, totally. Could you explain that? Why? What's romantic? I mean, it's a thing of like, you know, before I got involved in comedy, I was obviously like a fan. And when I was, you know, 18, I would go to the comedy cellar and like watch the comics. And it was like a huge deal. And now like that I am, you know, that's like my home club. So working there is, you know, I, I, I always remember walking from my dorm across a park to the cellar in the West Village. And so it's fun to be like, man, I never thought. And why you? Yeah. I never thought that this would be my life. And after all these years, I'm still here. And it's funny because in the West Village, there are so many different comedy spots. And I worked my way up to like 
the spot by, you know, like barking down the street and doing open mics here. And then I got to this place and then there's there was another club down the street and I got in there and then, you know, it's like very cool. And I try to keep that in my thoughts to like live in gratitude because I never want to like have it lose that romanticism uh -huh. or that appeal of, you know, like fun. And like, I got to remember, I'm very fortunate to, you know, live this life that I live. And also like the aspect of New York comedy that I love is it's it's so communal in the sense that like you can walk to spots, you ride the train to different spots and you'll see people that you know and you're like, what are you doing? They're like, oh, I'm done. You're like, well, hang. And then you'll end up picking people up on the way somewhere. Like I you miss see that. Someone. That's what it used to be like in LA. And I say used to, I don't think it's that it can't be anymore as much as when your class starts traveling and mm -hmm. like do, and not wanting to stay out and or having families or whatever. Yeah. It used to be, yeah, like you're waiting to get up at places or you go, you do shows and you either do them together or you meet at a diner. Yeah. I really miss that community yes. feel where now that's what made me ask that question is you have to go out of your way to see people. Well, I feel like New York is very organic and you can organically, as long as you show up, you'll be out and you'll see people this, that, the other because it is a very walkable town. It right. is, you know, like a, a communal transportation town. I feel like in LA, it's meticulously planned in the sense that it's like, okay, well, I'll get an Uber here and I'll see you in 45 minutes and then this. And it's it's very singular, I feel, in LA. Um, and there's not many places to hang. And I feel like uh, maybe I'm wrong, but, I, I, you know, I'm sober. So I've a lot of sober people in my life. Yeah. And I feel like LA is very like drink, smoke weed. And then here that's not as much of a uh, influence in kind of the. Whoa. Circles. I think of, I don't think of LA as drinking more than here. Really? Yeah. I mean, I have very little reference. Like I don't really drink. And mm -hmm. uh, I just think of like New York of like, you know, I'll concede. You're right about that. Yeah, I guess because I'm removed from it. Right. But it, by it, choice or you're you're not attracted to those people anymore? No, by choice. You know, it's, it's not for me. You know, I'll, I'll stay for the hang if there's like food or like an activity or some with some friends. I'll stay while they're drinking and everything. But like I, I for years and years and years, I stopped doing like the bar show hang or just yeah. like, you know, because people just get like obliterated. Like I, I don't really go to like comedy parties or like comedy social things. Cause everyone's like drinking. I get like, not nervous, just like anxiety of like, I always have to be moving, which is why I go outside and chain smoke, you know? Um, but what does moving offer you that chain smoking satisfies where if you were not moving, you would be anxious. Uh, I don't, I don't have the thought of like, God, I really want to drink. I really, but being around people and seeing them drink a after a certain point, you're sober and they're drunk and you're like, well, oh, I hate it. I hate being around drunk people. Okay. I get it. Yeah. And, and that's cool for them. Have fun. But after a certain point, I'm like, I'm bowing out. And then well, what uh, is that smoking? What is you want to go smoke? Like, do you feel like I want to, I want to me like a reset. Like when I'm at, if I go to like some party or some like get together, I'll spend most of my time outside smoking and then have like an outside hang with people and that'll be fun. But inside bars, I, I don't know. I just, I don't enjoy very much yeah. unless there's like a pool table or something like that, you know, just like standing around and drinking. I don't like. 2008, you move out of New York. You need to change your lifestyle. You got to get sober. And guess what? I didn't. <laughs> um, you did that not until 2015, 2014? Oh, no. I had years of sobriety in between, but I would always, I was like a chronic right. relapser. When did you move back to New York? 2012, August. And then a couple years later, you got sober for good so far. I don't mean yeah. so far with any disrespect. I just mean you haven't drank. No, since of course. Yeah. I mean, I, and that's the thing being like, I'm sober for the rest of my life. It's like, no, like God willing, I will right. be, but like I'm sober today. And if I do everything I did to stay sober today, tomorrow, I get a good chance of being sober again, you know, but you 2012, when do you start stand up? 2011. Uh, where'd you start? Philly. So that's where you moved to. I moved to Delaware. Delaware is like a 45 minute drive. You're from, from Philly, Delaware, right? From Delaware. Yeah. Um, so I would drive up every night to go to like open mics and everything while I had a breathalyzer in my car, which is mm -hmm. hilarious. 
So I'd pick my buddy up that I started open mics with. And I was like, dude, you can't tell anyone about this. Cause I was like embarrassed. And I thought mm. people wouldn't want to be my friend if I was like this freak, like sober guy. You were embarrassed, not that you had a, a drinking problem, but that you were sober. Yeah, I lived in a halfway house. Like I lost, I didn't have like a real job at the time. Like I was a loser, you know? And I was mm. like, I thought people would think like find that out about me and be like, I don't want to hang out with this guy. And like, I hid a lot of myself in comedy for a while. And then it got to the point where like, all I want to do is be a great comic and a great person. And I feel like with, with my comedy, I, I want to be honest. And in my life, I want to be honest. I got to a point with my comedy where I was like, what am I, what am I even talking about on stage? Like I, I was had so much that I in my life that I wasn't talking about. So I worked behind the scenes, like personally with like therapy and all this stuff to be honest and truthful and who I am personally. And then that translated to the stage. So I feel like it works tandem for me personally. I, you know, everyone else has their own little thing, but when you're starting stand up in 2011, uh, and a few years later, you're talking about stuff that maybe is a little more surface because of the shame you feel about who you are. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and knowing what you know now, what, 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 hack or cheat could you tell yourself that would make him either speak about the things he's ashamed of or perhaps lose some of that shame because it seems like you're not ashamed of it now no not at all and, and i think i i don't know because i feel like if if i were to go what is one thing you could have done different or whatever i i try to s stray away from that I'm sorry I'm cutting you off, but I, I don't want to forget this question, and that's not what I'm getting no, at. I'm please, not talking please. about things you could have done different. Right. I'm saying as we get older, um, if, we're, if, if, if we work on it and we're lucky, we gain new perspectives. Right, yeah. um, that doesn't mean that what we did we should be ashamed of in the past or we did it wrong. It helps get us to where we are. But I'm saying knowing what you know now mm -hmm. and the tools you have and the yeah. perspectives you have that you didn't have then, oh, what could those have been that gotcha. if you had? Yeah, yeah. It would have been, uh, you are loved and all you need to do is love yourself as much as other people love you. And, uh, that there is no fear. There is no shame. There's what do you only, mean there's no fear? There's no fear of people's perceptions. There's no fear of condemnation. There's no fear of. Why is there no fear? Because, because that's a choice. Well, I was always fearful of other people like disliking me if I right. was like really who I was or So you're if, saying there's no reason to be afraid. Yes. There's no reason to be afraid. There's no reason to live in fear. There's no reason to not authentically live as who you are and that's always changing and evolving. So be that person and embrace that. In embrace where you were and what happened, good and bad and embrace that that has made you who you are. I used to live in the past so much of like, God, I'm, I'm this, I'm that, I wish this didn't happen. And I would obsessively think about things in my past mm -hmm. because if I thought about it hard enough, I could almost trip in the moment to change it of going, what if I didn't do that? What if this, what if that, this one thing? And it got me nowhere. And so obsessing about that and trying to change it in my mind got in the way of me growing. And once I dropped that, you know, I and started living the present in the moment and finding gratitude for those things instead of hating it, regretting it, wanting to change it. Everything in my life just like exploded in a way of like, you know, I feel like I finally got glasses that I could see things clearly. And for so long, things were blurry or fogged. And I feel like I've come out of that and I'm, I'm grateful for that. And, th and that is um, a, a lot of reason for that is because I noticed that in my personal life and I work towards that. But also at the same time, like stand up saved me. You know, it's the only thing that in drinking is like the only thing or no, <laughs> that's the only thing I've never <clears throat> quit. Uh, but it's so funny how like something as silly as jokes mm -hmm. can give you purpose and meaning, you know. Is there validation in the things that you're talking about that were before scary where you realized, oh, these are now an asset? Is that how stand-up saved you? Or is it just that laughing feels good? 
Well, yeah, laughing feels good, but to make other people laugh and make other people feel better, like have a better day because of uh -huh. what you are doing that you're enjoying. The fact that I get to do stuff that I enjoy and create and make and as a byproduct, people feel better. Like mm -hmm. what a gift, you know, that's amazing. And I feel like, um, you know, the, all the stuff in my past, I used to hate it. And now I'm grateful for it. Not like I'm glad it happened, but like, you know, it is what it is. What can you do? You can either, my favorite quote of all time is from Claudia Black, the founder of adult children of alcoholics. And it's, it's never too late to have a happy childhood. So like you can stay in this thing of like regret or anger or whatever, it's going to get you nowhere and it's all about perspective. So it's never too late to change your perspective mm -hmm. and to go like, yeah, man, shit happened. But, you know, it like made me who I am and I like who I am and I'm grateful for that. You said. Um, Did that answer your question? I feel like I may have gone off on a tangent. Uh, there was a, a couple of moments that I didn't want to interrupt because I wanted to hear, but. Uh, maybe we'll still throw them in. But like when you're talking about how grateful you are and like what you get to do now, I want to swipe to me having diarrhea on you and swipe back. And then you talk about, well, if I could like make this this craft and this art and do what I want to do and it makes people happy, please swipe to you being Christopher Walken. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so maybe we'll put we'll put those in and now here's the how the yeah. sausage is made. But I want to know more about, because um, you said a couple of things that were, were uh, uh, uh more theoretical and some things that were more tangible. Mm -hmm. Tangible, for example, would be realizing how much time you're spending in the past and how it's doing nothing but negativity. It basically, it's being on Twitter. It's just like, why am I here? Yeah. Just get not be like, that's yeah. something like, like, oh, here's a tool. Yeah. When you catch yourself dwelling in the past, recognize, you know, not to stress too much about it, working on accepting that is what it is right. and that's what it's supposed to be. But there was one that you said that was more theoretical. I wonder if you have any tangible example of which was the first thing that you said. Um, uh, recognize that you're loved mm -hmm. and love yourself as much as other people love you. Yeah. One, how lucky you are that you recognize that other people do love you and you have people in your life for that. Uh, I don't think everybody is in that same position or at least knows that they are. Right. Um, but what is more in your control is loving yourself when, you know, that's something you could say, love yourself. I yeah. find that this idea of affirmations, looking in the mirror, you are good, you are smart, yeah. everybody likes you, you know, you're powerful. Yeah. That's not something that would work for me because now I'm just like doing the rules. What works for me is when I, when I notice something that I'm proud of, an accomplishment, uh, a relationship, uh, uh, um, uh, something that I have coming up, whatever it might be, uh, to take those wins um, and to really be like, I'm fucking, I'm good at this. Yeah. You know, like to actually like, not just say the positive thing, but to, when you, when you mean, mean it, yeah. say it when you, you know, and then there are times when like, I don't feel the way like, no, no, do you remember? Yeah. Like you said it out loud. You well, that's like writing and journaling helps because then you have definitive proof that, oh, I did feel this way yeah. and I recognize it and I can get back there because like, you know, I, I, there's a phrase, this too shall pass. Uh, and, yeah, uh, that's uh, uh, Moses parting the sea, right? Well, no, I'm thinking of um, Gandalf uh, on the bridge. Yes, thank you. I was <laughs> Moses. What? Yeah. Uh, no, but like everyone goes, this too shall pass. When you're like going through something or things aren't good, like hey, yeah. just hang on. It'll as get well better. as the positive, though, you got to remember that too. Yeah. Like it's not always going to be like this. So you know, I uh, grab onto it and kiss it, and don't make this the definition yeah. because when it goes away, you're going to be upset, but recognize it and just know that everything comes around, you know? And I, that was like really hard to kind of, you know, you can be aware of it, but to turn this stuff into action is, is pretty difficult and it takes a lot of work, you know, but like, like you said, recognize it and go, man, I, I am doing this. And then when shit goes South, remember like, oh yeah, I felt that way and I can get back there too. I've talked about this on, on my podcast before, but there was a, when I learned that, well, I'll, instead of repeating, I'll explain what it is that I, I did. I had a very, very good set one, one night. And uh, like, you know, you sometimes you have a good set where it's like, I think I'm just figure something else out. Like, you know, you feel like you just, every now and then you yeah. level up. You know, I, I wow. And the next day was so bad. Um, the, uh, apparently it was so bad. I thought it was just bad. Yeah, yeah. But uh, the club owner 
asked if for the next show if the feature could headline and we feature uh, i've talked about some podcasts no like before but the truth is I love that. as much as my feelings were hurt i felt so relieved that i only had to do a half hour right i felt like right. I, I could do a half hour or 25 minutes i felt right. like i could do that um but i felt so bad and like i'm not good at this and yeah. i had such a different feeling and i remember i wrote down that having a great set and having a bad set have the same or, or have the same thing in common which is um the feeling lasts a day or yeah. two or however long like no matter how great it is or how bad it is that's just in this pocket yeah so if well, it's like poker you're you, it's you, nothing like poker yeah what it's nothing like poker yes I'll, because, I'll, I'll, sh I'll prove how much it's not like poker. Okay, and then you I'll prove ahead. it like No, no, no. you tell me what's like poker, okay. and I'll, I'll poke holes in it. Well, I'll poke holes in it. if you hang on to your last hand, it's going to affect your next hand. And if you win big, and you're like, oh, I'm a big winner, and then you play again, and you lose, it, it's it's. Are it you passes. talking day-to-day -day or hand-to-hand? Hand-to-hand. So if you win a big hand, you're thinking that as a poker player, you want a big hand, and now you're thinking, I want a big hand. I'm sure going to win all of them, so I'm just going to bet all the money. Yeah. Oh, it, so you're it, just a bad poker player. What I'm saying is it passes. And to obsess about your last hand is going to affect your next hand. And you know, to worry about your next hand is going to affect the hand that you have. So if you're playing and betting in the future, it's not going to work. So you just got to concentrate on the hand you're dealt and deal with it. If it's good or bad, you fucking move on to the next one. You know, where I will connect with you on this is, is the golden rule. And this applies to both poker and life. Mm -hmm. And I believe you know what it is. Don't shit where you eat. Oh, God! No. Oh, fuck. It's 10 words. Know when to hold Treat them. Treat others. Oh. Know when. Know, know when, when to, to fold them. Um. Know when to fold them. Um. Could be 11 if you say and. It's Is it know when to hold them? No. Know when to fold them. And no, no, it's know when to. Know when to hold them. Um. Know when to fold them. It's the game of poker. Ian was right. Mm, 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 yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I was just uh, playing combative. I think that there's nothing, uh, there's no better analogy to life than poker. Because, <laughs> you know, everybody has, has dealt their own hand. Okay, no, hear me out. Hear me out. Thank you. Mm. Everybody's dealt their own hand. And arguably it's randomized right some people get you know two yeah. pair some people have you know an, an eight high yeah but when you learn how to play the game of life <laughs> sorry poker when you learn how to play the game of poker and you understand what's in your control right right and when you recognize that everybody has different perspectives and just because what you're holding is good doesn't mean what they have is better or worse yeah. it's all perspective man and when you start playing the game of life <sighs> Roll Sorry. With Roll with it. Don't when you start apologize. playing the game of poker, you start to recognize there actually are some patterns that, that exist. Now, they're not necessarily the statistical patterns of knowing what they have, but there are times when you see what you have and when you recognize that other people are playing it, you might be a redneck. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, no matter what hand you get, you get a get her done. If you you know that reverence you might be a wayne head no but i i mean you you are totally right some people get Usually dealt am. a shit hand some people get dealt a Pace great hand and uh you know it's all how you play it and at the end of the day uh, do you believe in a dealer god, geez. god. <laughs> yeah and let me tell you he's fucked me once or twice <laughs> are, are you catholic i grew up catholic but you're not catholic anymore Few people are. Uh, I believe in a God. Sure. But are you still Catholic? I'm not practicing. What do you practice? Hacky sack. Are you good at hacky sack? You look like the type of guys I went to high school with that played with a hacky sack. Fuck you. I mean that in like a really shitty way. I'm just saying, <laughs> in like in probably the most disrespectful way I could possibly say to somebody, <laughs> you seem like a hacky sack player. <laughs> Oh, that's rich coming from a human telescope. Bleep what he said. Oh, come on. Um, and just put up subtitle that he's fucking Jew when he's a telescope. <laughs> no, I, I am. Pra no. What do I practice? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I didn't really mean in faith. I was just saying like, you know, like sport or anything. I was just being silly. Oh, I love bike riding. 
Oh yeah, you even talked about bike riding in New York. How you could ride your bike places. It's the best. Wait, oh, I forgot. I wanted to ask. So you're like you're at New York. You're out. It's more organic meeting up with people. Yeah. When people are at, and I don't know where places are, but I think I could fake it. Uh, when people are like, like you're at, you know, 53rd and Main, uh, and then someone's there like 26 no in Soho. You like, it's oh, like, are you, are you guys so far away? Or it's like, whatever, it's New York. It is New York. But it is funny because like, yeah, I, I live in Brooklyn. I know there's no Maine. Huh? I know there's no Maine. You got to go way up north to get there. <laughs> no, it's, you can keep it in, but. Hey. Uh, so you're in Brooklyn. So once you get to Manhattan, you're thinking yeah, but I'm it's already like, here. If, if you're in Brooklyn and you're dating someone in Harlem, that's like almost a long distance relationship because it's over an hour away, you know? Right. So like it is, uh, what was your question? Thanks for coming over, dude. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Um, when you're out in New York, you say it's organic, you run into people because everyone's out doing shows, but yeah. aren't they far away from each Sometimes, other? Sometimes, but... The cellar is a great example because there's four spots on like right there's within like there's the main a room block and a half. There's two, isn't there's two rooms in in the main? You go downstairs and then there's another downstairs thing on the block. Downstairs the cellar main room and then down the street is two shows upstairs, one downstairs. So like there's you three can stand rooms down the street. Block. Yeah, and you know the stand is. A twenty-minute walk away near a comedy club. East Village is a twelve-minute walk away. You know, Midtown is further, but you know I, that's why on the bicycle it's great. I can. Do you have your own bicycle? You get you get one. You rent one of those things. I'm not one of those guys. You bring a bike from Brooklyn. Yeah. <laughs> Say that two times. It real bring a bike slow. from Brooklyn. Slow. Bring a bike from Brooklyn. Bring a bike from Brooklyn. <laughs> bring a bike from Brooklyn. <laughs> Hmm. Bring a bike from Brooklyn. Bring a bike from Brooklyn. Do you ride your bike or do you bring a bike on the train? Both. Hmm. Where do you keep your bike when you get to Brooklyn? Well, when I bring my bike to Brooklyn, keep it in my bedroom. <laughs> do you really? <laughs> Are you just looking for a bee? I'm looking for a bee. Speaking of bees, baby. Oh, um, hey, toots. Uh, I... Keep the bike in my apartment. I got a bike rack. But, dude, from my apartment to the cellar, it's like a 17-minute bike ride. To Manhattan, Lower East do you, Side, do you have to go, how it's do you 11 bike, minutes. How do you bike from Brooklyn to... to don't you don't you need to go through something? Or you just go over a bridge? Bridge, buddy. buddy. And you can get there in 17 minutes? Yeah. Or oh, well, that's your money back? Pedal to the metal. Right. But... Right. Uh, you know, 20 minutes. And then, you know, if if I get to go, sometimes I'll bring it on the, the subway because I, I fuck the my L. The L. The L. I fucked my back up a, a while back. So How long I, have you known my back up? Is he nice? <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I, I'm just reflecting on fucking him. Right. You fucked your back up. Fucked my back up, my understudy. And uh, yeah, so I would have to bring my bike on because I riding for a while like really hurt but uh it's better now but also i got kind of lazy so riding over the bridge i huff and puff sometimes so i'll just take the bike and then if ride. if if you had free transportation everywhere free ubers free everything would you i do because i hop the turnstiles what oh you hear me um i said that if you had free transportation for all of the kinds of different kinds of transportation including Ubers, mm -hmm. would Uber be what, or would Uber be what you pick or you still think it's more convenient to do what you're doing? Money aside. I love the train. I, I love it riding grounds the subway. You. It undergrounds me, really. <laughs> you all right? Yeah. Hmm. I just saw a reflection of myself seeing you and was shocked to see me being so engaged by somebody so interesting and... Hmm. And then I realized it's because I was looking at my own reflection. <laughs> That's an interesting man. <laughs> uh, Hold on a second. <laughs> All right. It's a cool guy. You going to do spots tonight? Yeah. Are you going to tape them? No. Yeah. Um, can we cut to something that you do tonight? Yeah. Uh, do whatever you want. If you don't have something, fine. We'll just cut back to me doing it. I do have something. Okay. Okay, uh, but if you uh, are up for doing something that's catered to this, yeah. whatever that might be, 
like a Christopher Walken. You just see me bombing at the cellar, like <laughs> doing inside jokes with the podcast. People are like, just, are you all right? I just go, I want you guys to try to my Patreon. Yeah, yeah. Every now and then we do Christopher Walken yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm at fucking Denver Comedy Works next weekend doing an hour, and it's just me like this in the microphone. Rick? <laughs> Rick Likey. I've thought about uh, Rick. Like, uh, I've thought about filming sets where I am playing with the animation, and the crowd has no idea what's going on. But it, when I get home, you know, I space jammed it. Oh yeah, and just um, and just voice, and I'm silent a lot. But there's voices I put in after. Um, yeah, just go and you do a promo while you go there. Say, hey, check out, check me out on the Take Your Shoes Off podcast. It comes out end of January, early February, and send me that, and I'll put that in here. Why the hell not? All right, and we're back. Why the hell not? That was funny. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. How long have you been doing that bit? <laughs> oh, my God. It took me a while to get it to where it is. You know, a lot of failing, a lot of trying. Right. It's worth it. If you had the opportunity to speak at the um, at where you went to high school. Mm -hmm. uh, at, Funnily enough, I got asked to speak at my grade school. How old is that? Uh, fourth to eighth grade. Fourth to eighth grade? Mm -hmm. Four, that's 10, 10, 11, 12, 13 years old? Yeah. What are you going to say to these kids? Well, I'm court ordered. <laughs> so. Sorry, I was just thinking about something funny I said earlier. <laughs> What'd you say? Uh, Interesting that the court would say, listen, it's punishment because you're so bad. I need you to go talk to some kids. Well, no, I, it's about, you know, how um, you shouldn't do uh, ketamine. Um, are you really talking about like you're a, like, look at, look at how far you've come? Uh. Tell well, me the truth. Are you really going to speak at the grade school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because so, the smile seemed real. So the um, the new like principal or head administration is you don't two buy of them. the title, huh? You don't buy the title. I mean, yeah, you know. the new I think principal? he bought the title. You know? <laughs> Thoughts? <laughs> oh, thanks, man. That guy's cool. Yeah, have him on the pod next. <laughs> Uh, in funny laugh. I'm, I'm, uh, two of the new administrators, uh, are like old friends and they are starting to do like new things at the school and they want to have a, uh, like a, a, a fundraising night where they have a couple, um, people that went to the school that are, uh, you know, like me are you and making like, this up. <laughs> no, no. I, I just feel weird because they asked me like, you know, celebrities at the blah, 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 and I'm like, I'm not. What right. are you talking about? But it's like famous alum. Right. I guess. So right. it's me and a couple like if you look at like directors. the pool of all the people from that school, you're right. And there. if I'm up there, well, the school ain't doing so well, brother. Or well, Mr. Hogan, are these schools trying to put out comedians? What? Never mind. I'm just saying, why would the school be doing bad if there were not a lot of famous comedians coming from it? That's no, no. Bad. Well, like, I, I'm a comic and an actor, and then there's uh, another All guy. Right, right, relax. Don't just, just be casual, man. I get it. You're doing great. You're very, you're very, you're doing cool stuff. No, it feels weird to say that, but Neil Casey, who wrote on Saturday Night Live, so was in here. Ghostbusters, uh, the remake. Mm -hmm. Uh, he's going to be on it, you know. And like, what is it? Are you are you speaking? Are you doing a performance? No, it, it's like a like a panel, just like interviewing, like talking about right. like memories and how the school helped and stuff. You're like not that. doing that within the next month, are you? Uh, I did it. It was great. Do you have footage? Yeah. No, I don't uh -oh. know when we're going to do it. Uh -oh. oh, I was supposed to send them a video, and I forgot to do that. Whoopsies. You can send them the video of me doing. Uh, you know, just flew in. Yeah. Um, no, are you I was supposed to send like a self like, hey, I really enjoyed my time at bleep, blah, bloop, bloop. Right. That's cool. That's a cool, that's a cool yeah, thing for them to ask of you. Neat. I, I, when, when I went there, I was in like a classic rock cover band. So in eighth grade, we played like the talent show and that was like a huge deal, you know? Mm -hmm. So to come back and, you know. Yeah. You were know. honored to be a performer then. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. My old, uh, my high school, um, back in, I think it was 20, it was 24. 14 maybe um they had asked if i would come back and teach comedy yeah i was teaching a two-day comedy class <laughs> oh it was I get... you're teaching it taking eight. wow okay no way uh for whatever that meant they did this thing for two days during thanksgiving where it was, you could come to school you didn't have to like right. like the school was monday tuesday and like tuesday wednesday there was like an optional thing 
where you could come and it was this two day intensive for all these different things, you know, fishing or whatever. I don't know what they were. Oh, and like they wanted cool. to do a comedy one. So I'm like, yeah, can I do it with my friend Brent Morin? Do you know Brent? I've heard the name. I don't know um, him personally. He he came. Uh, that he must have been <laughs> awkward. <laughs> oh, an orgasm? <laughs> no, no, he came. You know, like when you're doing a 70? <laughs> oh, he just wound up the 69, huh? <laughs> he uh, came and, and we taught comedy for whatever that meant. And it was uh, ninth, 10th, 11th, and 12th graders. And by the way, four years now isn't that much the difference between a ninth and a 12th grade you know Dude. and then doing stand up and and the first day was a full day of us in class and like getting to know the kids and doing like zip zap zops and stuff and then the next day the the, the cleveland improv let us have a thing there so they would come and they we were, they were working on the racks and they all did a few minutes oh dude that's awesome it was really uh it, but it was also cool like coming back and seeing some teachers and like yeah i had a lot of you know there was some trouble in school because yeah. you know i was a bad boy of course mm. <laughs> and um it's like oh look at i this is cool like yeah. they want me to and i wanted to and that's awesome uh, and it felt and i felt that same thing like at the time i wasn't as famous and successful as an award-winning dramatic actor like i am now <laughs> um but it's like celebrity but you know yeah it's like weird vanessa bayer went to this school she you know was way more popular yeah. this but this again this is before i want to peabody dr dramatic uh well, I will say, piggybacking off of what you said, so I used to be a teacher in New York City. I, I taught test prep at a bunch of different schools and everything. That's different than being a tutor? You practice prep of particular tests? I prep the AIDS medication. I would teach it to children. Um, and <laughs> Tell me the truth. What were you doing? I was teaching, so uh, Regents test prep. So I, I got a curriculum my, given to you that you were prepping people for. Yes, I was. I got a degree in English education. I taught for a little bit, but then I stopped teaching. And then I came back to the city and I started had a job drinking. For, what? <laughs> I said, started drinking. Uh huh. This and is before printers. This is before 2008. Before. No. Printers was 2015. Catch up. Uh, is my favorite condiment. OK. Uh, no, it's not mayonnaise and mustard. Uh, <laughs> having the, the sun set and come back up, you're just listing condiments. <laughs> I have a long beard. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, but I was teaching test prep. I was at a bunch of different schools in the city. I do like 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at one school and then like 3 to 6 at another, you know. Is and that what you thought your, 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 your job was be? Oh, you were, you were wanting to be a comedian still. Yeah. Dude, this I is had, how you made money. I've had like a million different jobs. Right. And, and in order to like live here, I had to have like five jobs at once. And I was like open micing at night and all this wow. stuff. And um, the last school I ever taught at was in the Bronx. And years later, I volunteered to do a um, like a after school comedy class at a school. Mm -hmm. And the school they placed me in was at the school I used to teach at. Huh. So that so was like pretty serendipitous. Thing. Yeah, it was really neat. Yeah. That was like really, really cool. It was twice a week for like a month and a half. And uh, How was, old are the kids? What's that? How old are they? Uh, how old were they? They were like um, sixth to eighth grade. So you're so always was, working like with middle school? Like no, I, I did a little bit. High school I worked with and I loved teaching high school. High school was like the best. Would you ever do that again? No. No. I don't mean like as in now you can't do stand up, but like you get older, you're maybe you're not moving around as much like no. done, done, never. Why? And with everything that I've been doing for the past 12 years, I don't think they'd, you know, like I've said some awful shit, huh. you know, what's the worst thing you said? And I don't think I'm going to get flagged for this, but, you know, when you are fucking in a restaurant and you're looking at the menu and the flim flam with the slim slam, these motherfuckers don't even realize they're giving you too many fucking options. And it's like, what am I looking at Netflix here? Or am I looking at a diner menu? Well, no, I've just been like candid about my sexuality and everything. And oh, I, I don't know I, about your sexuality. What is it? Huh? What's your sexuality that you're candid about? Oh, I'm... I've been with men and trans women. And Can we cut to a clip? Uh, yeah. Clip. Can we cut to a clip? Uh, and you think that, that you can't like be open with that stuff. I've told stories kids. about being with hookers and being in jail and fights and everything. Right. And it's like people are so, you know, 
probably wouldn't want someone like that teaching their kids. And I get it. You know, like when I was teaching, I didn't tell anyone I did comedy. They didn't know. I would just like leave for a couple days because I had like road work. Interesting. You know? All the things you felt maybe would need to be hidden. Comedy was the one. What do you mean? Why hide comedy? You think you get in trouble for being a comedian and teaching? Well, I didn't want my kids to look me up or like to look oh, up my videos and stuff right, like that. Oh, right, right, right. You know what I mean? Like, right. And also it's like none of their business what I do in my private life. Have you seen Fighter? No. Uh, not Fighter. Uh, Warrior. Uh, Tom Hardy and I'm forgetting his name. It's I, I, Out of all the movies I've seen numerous times, that's probably in the top five movies I've seen. Like I've probably seen it eight times plus. Yeah. Um, what the fuck's his name? We'll put him up. Uh, but wait, is it Christian Bale? No, that's oh. Fighter. Unbelievable oh. movie. Mark Wahlberg. Oh. I mean, unbe yeah, unbelievable yeah, yeah, movie. Yeah. Uh, but in Warrior, um, uh, I want to look him up. Uh, in Warrior, the 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 actor that I'm looking up now is a teacher. He uh -huh. used to be in MMA years before. Right. Um, uh, but uh, so anyway, so some stuff happens. He needs to make money. He goes and he does fighting. Uh, um, Joel Edgerton. He goes uh, and Nick Nolte as well is their dad. And he goes and he does some fighting stuff like on the side and he comes in and he gets beat up and somebody films something and they find out the teacher is fighting and he brought, he, the principal brings him in like, we can't have this. And he's like, yeah. I'm, but like, this is my, I need the money. And yeah, but that to me is like, that's your version. Like, I don't want people looking up to see totally. that I'm doing all this nighttime dark yeah. shit. Great movie. I got to see it. I'll check it out. I mean, you're, warrior, warrior, warrior. So good. Yeah. Two bro. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't want to because it's kind of. I mean, it's probably in the trailer, but I still think of it as a spoil. Glassman fight ads movie watch party. Um, maybe. I mean, not while I'm here this trip. No, 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 no. Like Zoom. Like you watch it in L.A. time. I watch it in New York time. I'll tell you what I do want to do. Hmm. I want to find a place here for like a month or two at some point. And like, I'm not going to move here, mm -hmm. but I, like I was saying, I can really think I want to come here and I want to do stand up. I want to, I just want to be here and yeah, feel that yeah. out and doing something like that. I would love to have friends. Yeah. Like, cause something that podcast has offered me that wasn't my intention. And, and one of the things I'm the most grateful for is some of the relationships I've developed because mm -hmm. of it. These long form conversations I have with people that I know a little or not at all. And now I have some friends in New York, maybe. You know? Yeah, certainly um, none you've made today, but I can imagine no, that. No, uh, I had uh, Dan Soder over earlier. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. none that you've made today. Um, did Dan say something? But I would Said like... a lot. Uh, but it would be fun. Like, I would love to be friends with you and, and watch stuff and go do shows I'd love that. and stuff. And I'll tell you this. There are so many movies that I've never seen, and I love people introducing me to stuff, but if I watch it with them, you know? Uh, like, I had never seen Pulp Fiction, and... I had like a movie watch party with some friends and we all watch Pulp Fiction. And it was like really fun to do that. I'd love to do that with you. That'd be great. I just referenced Pulp Fiction a couple of nights ago um, while I was here, ordered a milkshake from this place that it's, doesn't matter. It's more, a little bit more expensive because it's the dairy free and the, mm -hmm. da, 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 the delivery fees and the blah, 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 the tip because they're bringing up the thing. And it's like, I'm on, I'm on vacation. I'll pay a little extra for stuff. Um, after the delivery fees and stuff, um, we'll bleep the number. I don't want people to hear what I paid for this milkshake. Uh, it was dollars and change. Ha! Okay. And, and I was thinking, I remember how flabbergasted he was that it was a $5 milkshake in Pulp Fiction. Wait a minute. Yeah. Five, like what is in this milkshake? Yeah. And this was, um, but yeah, I just wrote Pulp Fiction. Um, I'm going to get a tattoo of a tombstone that says Zed is dead. Zed? Tattoo brothers? No, no, I don't have any tattoos. Zed, really? who's Zed? Zed is dead. The guy Zed in uh, Pulp Fiction. Oh, I don't even remember Pulp Fiction that well. Bruce Willis goes, Zed is dead. And you really want to get that tattoo? Yeah, it is fun. Right. Let's see. <sighs> Go on phone. Yeah. I don't have any tattoos. My brother has a bunch. Why don't you? I don't want it. Come to New York. Get a tattoo. What should I get? What if I? That is death. What? No, no, that, I don't have a connection to that. I did once think about. Um, there's a, a an algorithm for a Rubik's cube that I sometimes forget. Gay. <laughs> you gotta say bye now. <laughs> bye. All right. Bye bye. Thanks for coming over. I'm bye. Uh, uh, the the fine there's a there's an algorithm that I didn't remember at first. Um, 
that I thought, oh, that could be a cool tattoo just to have it here. <laughs> Nobody would know what it is. But you'd be getting numbers tattooed on your arm. Well, it's not numbers. It's like, are you apostrophe? It's just like oh, a little thing, oh, like oh, top, oh, bottom, oh, or whatever. Oh, 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 oh. Um, and it's just like, it looks like a little, like, it would look like another language almost. Right. Um, That's fun. Do it. Why not? Um, I, I got a tattoo on my birthday. I'm getting another one Wednesday. Oh, you had no friends that would go out with you, so you got a tattoo? Fuck I didn't mean you. for that to sound like a burn. Fuck you. I just meant like you couldn't go paintballing, so you're like, I'll go get a tattoo? No, dickhead. I was supposed to go paintballing next week, and I canceled. What's your tattoo that you just got? A wizard. You just got that, huh? Yep. Oh, I wasn't having you in it. Let's do it again. Brilliant. Brilliant. Um, what, what can we plug for you? Oh, man. Um, being Ian with Jordan on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, patreon.com slash being Ian pod. Uh, I would love to plug some road dates. Matter of fact, I'm going to be- text, I, I could t text you the week before this comes out and you could t give me an update of everything. But okay, say well, what you I'm, want now I'm going to be in, in Los Angeles. I'm headlining Hollywood Improv February 19th. Ooh. Eh? Uh, and, you know- Nice. Um, That's fun, man. Maybe I'll come out. Yeah, dude, that'd be great. Do a spot. Why not? Ooh, a little guest spot on your show? Eh? Okay. Eh? Well, What's you want to come on out February 18th? We can go to I'll Cantor's. maybe be doing it. Cantor's. I love Cantor's. I love when I'm here. My favorite deli is, uh, which other people tell me, nobody tells me, whatever. I don't want to say nobody says it as if I'm like doing a bad plug for them. I love Sarge's so much. Sarge's is my favorite. My favorite. They were open 24 hours and after the pandemic, they now close at like midnight. It's such a bummer because we get off work so late and I just love Sarge's. They don't deliver to New Jersey. And I want it so much. Well, you got to go to the Big Apple. I'm going to go, like I said, I'm going tomorrow to do Bobby Kelly's. I'm going to go get some Sarge's. Pastrami on a bagel. Ugh. You know, you only do it on rye? Brisket on rye. I normally, when are you going to Sarge's? I normally do rye. In fact, what I do is, I'm remembering, I do get it on rye, and I also get a bagel. Ah. And I take half, half the pastrami. I just don't eat bagels. Yeah. So when I'm here, like, I want a bagel. Yeah. And like, what am I going to put on it? What's your bagel? Oh, I'll do anything. I'll salt do, bagel. Yeah, I'll do a salt. I'll do a pretzel. I'll do an everything. I'll do an onion. I love bagels. Bread Brothers in my neighborhood. <laughs> oh, I thought which you were saying. Which is also what we are. Like, Bread Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> they have a French toast bagel, and it's and incredible. FTB. Um, French toast yeah, bagel. Yeah, dude, come out. Yeah, I'm going to be in LA for like the week. Yeah. It'll be fun to hang. Well, you have my number. Let me know. Remind yeah. me when you're here. Um, this might actually be coming out right then. Amazing. Um. And also, I'm going to be at Wise Guys Utah, March 30th, Tacoma Comedy Club, Spokane Comedy Club, House of Comedy Detroit. I got a lot of stuff. Comedy Connection. Um, Arlington Draft House. We'll put your, your, your link for your tickets. Is it all at your website? Yeah. What is it? Ianfidance.com. Uh, F-I-D-A-N-C-E? You got it. And uh, we'll put it, if you're like, oh, how am I going to type this all in? Go to the description. You'll click the button. You're the man. And if you want to see more Christopher Walken stuff, you know where to go. That's patreon.com slash Jordan is my Ian. <laughs> and, uh, you know, as they say in France, scoot do. Scoot do. Scoot music. Brilliant. Blue. Blabbity blue.